just because you were working towards your career for 10 years doesn't mean you're entitled to anything. You know, I could have been working in a cave, banging on a rock. That's not going to change anything for the Montreal music scene. Yo, but I was there doing it every day. Who the fuck cares if you were in a cave banging on a rock? It didn't do nothing for me. My name is Brandon Hecht. I'm the owner of Makeway Studios. I'm an artist. I go by Anu Buds. I've been doing this music thing for 12 years in the city. I grew up in Cote St. Luc, NDG area, really. You know, in Cote St. Luc, it's primarily here in Montreal. It's white Jewish people. There's not too much culture going on there. So once I was brought into this multicultural school, I really connected and that's where I really felt at home. All different ethnicities, all different types of music, all different even languages and stuff like that. Coming up, like uh, when I was listening to music and stuff in my house, let's say, my parents' music, they were listening to a lot of classic rock, so like, and disco. My dad was like the big Afro disco man back in the day, white pants, platform shoes, that whole crazy shit. But my dad was definitely all into the rock, the Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, ACDC, Kiss, with the tongue and the makeup. And I feel like this is what let me know also just what good music is. Great artists at the base of it and how they interpret music and how they went along to make their songs. I listen to it today, some of these old records or vinyls that I got, and it's like, damn. And then once I started getting, I started hearing little inspirations of rap music, I'd be in the car with my cousin, you know, and, and clips, Birdman comes on, whatever happened to that boy? And I'm like, oh, I'm like, okay, like, this is what I like. It's kind of funny when you talk about like Jews, you know, this is like the whole thing, I guess, where it's like, oh, well, it's like everyone that's outside, you know, you think it's like, okay, Jews, they're all the same. They all talk to each other all, you know, there's a lot of preconceived notions that come around this group or ethnicity or however you want to call it that you're not a part of. But when you're a part of it, you see how broken down it is and how separated there is or how there's this different sub genres of everything. You know, there's like the kind of like rich snobby kids that are in the West Island. You'll find a little bit of the rich snobby a little bit everywhere, but like on a more of like an average stuff, like Cote St. Luke was like more of like the lower income, you know, like more duplexes, more things like that. So just like any hood, you know, we had a uh, back by Cavendish Mall back before it was all these houses where it is now. It was just parking lots and each parking lot was sectioned off by number. So in the back end, it was like seven, eight, nine the three things and that's where like the benches were in the park so it's like whenever there was fights it's like yo meet me at seven eight nine you know so it's like we all we all had the same shit as any hood the same shit that you hear now nobody support but you're gonna see that english french spanish and hebrew you know uh, the artists are gonna be saying the same stuff nobody supports me your friends don't support you until you go out until you do it big and then it's it's the same shit in any in any language really you know it's how support goes you know, it's 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 the same thing, no matter where. It's not even a city. Oh, you know how Montreal. Yeah, that's what the guy's saying. And then two towns over. You know how many towns there are between here and Florida? And I'm seeing what people are saying about this the city's music scene. And I'm getting irritated. Because now it's like, oh, we're at a spot where there's a lot of French dudes. There's a lot of English dudes. It's really mixed up. But you know, the English scene, just a bunch of these French guys trying to rap English. They all have accents. You know how it is. I'm like. What? What do you mean you know how it is? Nah, yo, if you see the people I'm rapping with or the people I grew up with or the people back in the loop, da da da, yo, we don't speak with, yo, we got English ass people in Montreal. And that's where that same problem came back. It's like, nah, like, yo, we're from here and we speak English and the Anglophone scene is real. We were just nice with it. We would think of bars, we would think of crazy concepts, and then we would see famous people coming out with those same concepts and shit. We'd be like, fuck, beat us to it, you know? So we were like, but that lets us know, okay, we got something. I really got started with the whole recording and the business side of things when everybody I was rapping with, they'd end up coming back to my spot and be like, yo, I have this headset I used to play video games on. You know, but like now I don't really play games no more, but I still have this headset. I'm like, yo, we could definitely record with this. You know, and we, I don't even know why, like going to a studio or even like the idea of having it, like it was never in the question, you know? So right away we're like, yo, how do we do this ourselves? Got the headset, put it on, cut the glove, uh, cut the thumb off a glove. 
so it's thick. Put it right on there as a pop filter so you don't get those popping sounds. And yo, we were golden. Downloaded this free program, Audacity. Got the thing, loaded a beat from YouTube. And yo, and then we just started recording. Like I had th two friends, and I had three friends, and I had five, and I had like, yo, 10 rappers. My mom was like, yo, you can't fucking have all these people in the house no more, you know? Uh, it's getting wild. So I was like, yeah, true. But in my head, I was also like, okay, well, if I'm getting all these people, that means there must be something here. So that's when the business started happening in my head. I got a nice microphone and I um, started renting out a studio space. Actually, um, this was DJ Horror. So once he started going on the road more, he said, look, I'll open up my doors to you. You know, you seem like a good guy, this and that. And now I was able to remove it from the house and actually have a business. Uh, so I was rocking at that point probably for about four years I was doing Makeway. So we got the notice one day and like I said, always advance through hardship. So once this notice came saying, yo, like the building's coming down, y'all got to dip. We we're like, fuck, all right, what do we do? What's the plan? You know, and I knew I couldn't downgrade because that wouldn't be a good look. So I linked up at a little like spot just for like, while I was figuring stuff out, I was gonna find a new spot to rent. And then this place came about where it's like, if I could sustain the uh, the monthly cost of that, then I would actually be able to run a building at that capacity. Okay, if I break this out into certain sections, production rooms, photo studio, different things like this, I could actually rent this out to a bunch of different producers in the scene, make a community, get everybody together, have everything that an artist needs all in one building, and then this is kind of what my idea was since the jump. I'm like, yo, we could definitely do this. Broke it out into 12 different rooms. We had the basement rocking, the top floor with the radio room, all that shit. And then the top floor, it, it was like a powerhouse. Etienne Du Rocher was definitely one of the first people that I took onto the scene. And now he's definitely been killing it. And then we had a lot of people come and go start offices, learn about their business and then take it to the stars. Um, we had Damiano from Low Class, who's now working with some great labels. He's doing really amazing moves. We had uh, Miro La Flaga, who had his first office there, painted it all pink. The artist side was always the fire. You know, that's what fed every other business that I did. There's a lot of business things, you know, like studio, 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 but then eventually as an artist, when it really came again, was when we dropped our first music video for Eyes Low. And at the time we were performing probably every two weeks in the city at random bars, shows, this and that. And that was a song that we'd always perform. People were singing, they knew the words to it. So when we dropped the music video, it just all collected everything. It was our first video, but it was never the feeling that I got when I first battled somebody and took his fucking food. Then after I met Funk Loren, and he taught me about how the Diamond District in Montreal works and well, look, anything that you custom make, we could custom print and then, yo, we could turn that into gold. So I was like, holy started doing this whole jewelry thing and learning 3D design and it was just one skill after another and now I'm at the point where I'm pretty much doing 3D design every day. I know people that do 3D design but they do it to make like cover arts. You know, you make uh, 80 bucks, 100 bucks on a cover art with your 3D design. I was like, yo, how do I use 3D design but maximize what I can make with it? Ah, I'm gonna make gold with my 3D design. Take that weight off of your hands Holding the packs and they depended on when it lands Then that's when I really started linking up with Ricky D. My first big show like where we were like, okay, this isn't like a little club no more. Like there's gonna be 2,000, 3,000 people out there. You know, like that was the Pusha T and Fabulous show. And, and that's the reality for a lot of people doing arts or, or, or poems or rap and this and that is that, yo, not the majority gets to perform in front of two to 3,000 people. That's when I really also started to like, in a sense, like humble myself and understanding what a great situation I've been able to put myself in. But then at the same time, understand like, yo, I got to run with this. Each town has thousands of artists and each town probably has a hundred artists in a studio tonight, making a big move that's going to change their life. Everyone feels like they're the king of the, of the anthill in their little town. They're, ah, they all want to do something more. So when I went to LA, I was fortunate to link up with a group of people that were all the best of their city. I'm the best from here. I'm the best photographer from here. I'm the best producer from here. Whatever it was in their field, they were the best in their city and they outgrew their city and they feel like they wanted more of a challenge, 
more clients, more of an industry. And when you go to LA, Florida, these kind of places, this is where, at least for the English industry, this is where it is. They put in all their time just to take you down Fill your head with lies, trying to fool you now Stay patient on the line, baby, hear me out I'm taking back what's mine, better hear me out If I was your mistake, baby, don't wait up I started making bread, had to change it up There ain't no looking back, now they look at us I started on my way when I